Welcome to Kibarium Focus. In this episode, we're going to be taking a quick look at the Akiyamago style of Kibari as tied by Yamada-san. We visited Yamada-san in the summer of 2017 and he showed us this pattern in addition to showing us a picture book of all the local Akiyamago patterns from the past couple of generations. Um, it was a very interesting book to look at. We managed to come away having taken a, a few photos of it. Um, before now, it's been widely reported that the Akiyamago style of Kibari um, was just a single pattern and that it featured a, a hackle body, a solid sort of wall of hackle that was then trimmed back um, to form the body from the sort of stubs of hackle that were trimmed. Um, that is true. There are patterns that have that sort of style. We've actually been given examples of that style as well. But Yamada-san's style is slightly different in that he ties a peacock hurl body and puts a hackle on the front. Um, so it resembles superficially the style that's been reported as Akiyamago style, but uh, the tie-in's a little bit different. So when you see a close-up of this hook, you may notice that there's no eye. In the UK, this is called the spade end hook. I have no idea what you guys in the USA call it. Um, in Japan, it's often just referred to as a eyeless hook when, uh, when talked about to us English. I'm going to be using this bead cord, which is a great material for making eyes on these eyeless hooks. And I'm going to cut off a bit more than I normally would if I was just tying for myself, just so you can see it and how it's being tied in. Um, we've formed a loop at this end. And we're going to tie it in at the very back. Then I'm going to use my whip finish tool just to line it up so that we've got just the right size for an eye. Now that is quite a fiddly job right there. But once you've got to that stage where you've got a nice straight eye, the rest of it's all downhill from there in terms of work and it's worth bearing in mind that tires like Yamada-san do this with their bare hands and no vice and not much in the way of tools so I've secured that eye or loop now like this and we're going to leave these tags on for now uh, they are actually going to form a tag at the back of the fly when we've finished. But if you tie them short or cut them now, it ends up interfering with the dressing of the fly. It's much easier to leave them sticking out and finish it after. So we've got an eye, which is where we'll tie our tippet on when we come to fish this. Um, the next thing we need is some peacock hurl. So I'm just going to grab a couple of strands of peacock hurl. Now, I like to snap the end of the peacock hurl. It just makes sure there's no brittle bits as you tie in. And I'm just going to catch them in about halfway down the body like this and run them all the way to the back and back up like that. And then I'm going to wrap it up the body in the opposite direction to the way that I'm wrapping my thread and then just tie that off and break off like that. Now if we left the peacock hurl like that and tied on a hackle, the first time a toothy trout gets its teeth around that, the peacock hurl is likely to snap and come unraveled. And if you've ever tied flies with peacock hurl and not secured the peacock hurl down, you're probably no stranger to that. So what we're going to do is run back with the thread and then cut back through the peacock hurl again. So now there's a couple of passes of thread and because we've wound the peacock hurl the opposite way to the way we've wound our thread, you get a nice secure body, any trout teeth breaking any fibres on there. A fibre of peacock hurl can only unravel less than half a turn maybe a quarter of a turn before it's locked down so it tends to keep the fly a little bit more long-lived 
when it comes to hackle the typical hackles that they would use in Archimago would have a black center stem historically they'd be taken from a Japanese bantam a small rooster um, this is a genetic hackle and it's a style called furnace um, there are a couple of styles that have dark central stems like the traditional time requires um, there's badger which is either silver or golden normally where it's a blonde color or a white color with a black center and furnace has a nice brown center so we're going to trap in our furnace feather there and then build up a nice hackle on the front of the fly like that trap that down and we can trim off I like to use a little trick that Goishi demonstrated for me next I use a half hitch tool just over the front of the fly, just to push all those hackles back out of the way. And it lets you form a nice head, nice and neat. And then a bit of a whip finish. And that's pretty much it. We can then trim those tags and if you just fluff them a little bit you'll see they'll spread out and we'll just make sure that eye is nice and open. If you hold the fibres out the way like that much easier to put on a dab of varnish to secure that whip finish. And there we have it, our finished Akiyamago style Kibari.